I know it's you. You're trying to got, come into my room. That's pretty really good. Why wouldn't they leave me alone? Hi my love bugs and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm so excited to be recording these videos. It makes me so happy. Uh, if you can't hear my family in the background, I'm really sorry. I live in a very small house full of lots and lots of people who talk like we are in a jungle, basically. Who is new to this channel, welcome back. Well, if you're new to this channel, it's not going to be welcome back. It's going to be welcome to everyone who is old to this channel. Well, if you're old to this channel, then welcome back. But to those of you that are new, welcome. This is Ruby's Haven of Healing. Ruby's, um, what is it? Real Talk with Ruby. You know, productivity with Ruby. Everything with Ruby, okay? Why have I got this hairband in my arm? Sorry, around my wrist. I don't know why I said arm. I need to stop looking there. It's just, I keep looking at myself. I just keep, can I just, can I just, one? Okay. All right, that's fine. Done, 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 done. I'm not gonna do it again. <laughs> Oh god, oh did I just trip it? Did I just tip it? What did I just do to my <laughs> tripod? Anyway, welcome back to my channel. Um, I am much more calm. I'm not crazy. Of course not. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. Um, everyone who's new is probably thinking, what is wrong with this girl? Like why is she talking like a widow and why is she going crazy? But Welcome, my name is Ruby Dahl. I am, an I am a writer. Let's repeat. Welcome, my name is Ruby Dahl. I am an author, a content creator, a mental health advocate. I have written four books of poetry and prose and self-help. You can find them below. And I am here to just talk about my writing journey today. I'm just here to tell you all about how I got here. So, so many of you have asked me, so many of you told me that you want to know, you know, what my journey looked like, how I got from where I was to where I am, although I don't really feel like physically I've gotten anywhere, but mentally, emotionally, yeah, definitely. I've made a huge journey. I've made a huge journey. What is wrong with my throat? <laughs> So I thought that since we're going to have a conversation about my writing journey, about the ups and downs that I've had, about how I got here, um, I thought let's just have a, a tea time with Ruby. And I've got my coffee right here. I call it tea time, but it's really not tea time. It's coffee time with Ruby. As you can see, my lipstick's on there because I've already had a couple of sips. But I'm gonna show you the pretty side, the pretty side. Too cute to care, as you know. Let's get started, shall we? You can't really have coffee without biscuits either, so I've crossed my legs, I'm having some biscuits, and I'm just gonna have a chat with you about my writing journey and just everything that I've learned. So most of you who know me, most of you who've been following me for a short while, or for a long while, or for however long, okay, just really stop talking, will know that at all I'd ever wanted to be since I was a little girl, was an author. I absolutely loved reading, I loved books. They took me to a different world altogether. I would read so many stories. Um, I had so many favorite authors. I can't remember their names off the top of my head, but growing up, like as a teenager, as a, as a little girl, I used to read Kathy Cassidy, I used to read Jacqueline Wilson, I used to read Karen McCombie's books. And then when I grew a bit older, I'd read, you know, Stephanie Meyer, Twilight, Harry Potter, so many books that took me to just a different world. I couldn't understand how authors were so talented that they were able to send their readers into a different fantastical story world altogether where you felt like you knew their characters, you felt like you were their characters, you know? And it, it, was, it was magical to me. It was the most incredible feeling in the world when I'd read a book I'd have a little torch, so I had a bedtime obviously, and I'd sleep alone um, in my tiny little single bed in my room, and it was pink, and I, I told my brother to get me a torch so that at night, when my dad would turn the lights off and we'd have to go to bed, I'd get under the covers and I'd get my torch and I'd read whichever book I was reading like that, because that's how much I loved reading. I still love reading, but yeah, that's how much my love for reading developed. Of course, as you get older, you realize that a lot of the dreams that you inhabit are just not meant to be manifested. They're not meant to be for you. Um, and that's what you believe. That's what you tell yourself. Because in the society that we live in, we we think that we just have to follow the plan. We have to follow the social structure 
of what's that for us go to university find a job get married have children and just follow that cycle and not only was being an author so near impossible but being a, an author as a south asian brown woman where not many south asian authors existed this is you know we're talking 10 years ago when i was when i was 16 um and i was just starting sixth form and i was deciding what subjects i wanted to do for sixth form and i picked english literature and i picked philosophy and psychology and history and i told myself that i'm going to go to university and i'm going to be a teacher because being an author is just so unrealistic so i went to university uh, i graduated in philosophy and i decided at 21 to do a pgce which is a degree in um, teaching doing a teaching degree was always my plan b nobody had known that my plan A was to be an author. I wanted to be a novelist. I still do till this day. I'm working on my debut novel. I've been working on it for a long, long time. I don't know when I'm gonna publish it, but that's a different conversation altogether, which we don't need to get into today, yeah. So all I wanted to do was be an author, but I needed to be practical. I needed to understand that I need a stable career, a career that my parents will be proud of, my dad will be proud of, <clears throat> my brother will be proud of, something that is going to help me, you know, financially. So I decided to do a PGCE. Now, three months into my PGCE, as most people know, I decided to leave my teacher training course because I realized that I was spending too much time focusing on plan b when i should have been focusing on plan a which was to be an author so that's when i decided that even though it was unrealistic even though it was something that probably would never happen i didn't want to live the rest of my life thinking that i could have given it a shot um and it might have worked if i had just given it a shot if i had just reached for that particular goal so i left my pgce i gave up for the first time in my life and i decided to work on my debut novel with no idea of how to write with no idea like i'd been working with this novel for a couple of years uh, in between summers at university but i had no idea what i was doing i hadn't done english literature in university i hadn't written creatively for so many years so i was really bad like i would say that my writing wasn't great back then this is, you know, four or five years ago. So yeah, I wasn't great. Fair enough, I wasn't a great writer, but the one thing that was the most incredible, <clears throat> always my throat. The one thing that was the most incredible um, in pushing me forward and the thing that mattered the most was that I had dreams, I had goals and I had the urge to make it happen for myself. Now, when you have a goal, when you have this particular purpose that's so pressing it's so important that nothing else matters you need to pursue it you need to do everything that you can to make that goal happen for you it doesn't matter if you're no good in the beginning it doesn't matter if you don't have a plan it doesn't matter if you don't know where you're going just focus on it just start it just take the first step to to do this and that's what i did i took the first step and i was like okay i'm not really great at writing this book that I'm writing, probably no one's going to purchase it, but I, I have this pressing urge, I have this pressing goal in my heart and I want to do it. I want to make this work for myself. Of course, life had other plans. Uh, in that process, I broke my heart and me and my friend split up, my best friend of seven years, who I'd known growing up. Like, this person knew me inside out. This person had seen me grow, I had seen him grow, and we had known each other so, so well that I had never imagined a life in which he didn't exist. Now, the reason why I'm so okay with talking about it is because it was so long ago that I'm just like, I'm completely over it. Um, I think about that person, I think about the girl that I was back then, and the person that I have become today and the person that I was then, there is a humongous difference. There is a difference between the sky and and the earth, basically. It's the ocean and, and yeah, I don't really have a good metaphor. A difference between the sun and the stars, the, the, the night and the day. Yes, it's a difference of night and day, okay? Because that person, she was, she had these particular expectations of people she had these particular ideals she had this worldview that is so different to the worldview and the ideals and the expectations and concept of love and happiness and everything that i've got now and i feel like now my concept is so much better so much more complete so much more well-rounded and i'm still grateful in a way for that girl because if she hadn't existed then i wouldn't have come to be i wouldn't have been able to be the person that i am today i wouldn't have been how strong um, and dedicated to my 
<clears throat> how strong and dedicated I am to my goals. So in a way, I'm very, very happy. In a way, I'm very grateful to everything that happened. Um, but essentially, you know, we fell apart and I decided to create an Instagram page. Now, I had no idea that in Insta authors existed. I had no idea that people were sharing their writing online at that point. However, there were. There were so many wonderful Instagram writers. There was RM Drake. There was Ruby Core. There was RH Sin. There were so many who had established themselves as an Insta poet and were doing amazing things for themselves. When I did this, when I created this particular page, it was just to heal. It was just to get over whatever it was that I was experiencing. And I was experiencing so much at that time. I was heartbroken. I was sad. I was all over the place. So I just wanted to heal. I wanted to focus on my novel, write that novel. And then I wanted to heal from this experience. And then I wanted to move on from it. However, something different happened altogether. Of course, the rest of you know the story very well. Very well. Very well. Um, I am multilingual. Okay, so... I speak several languages. Sometimes it's different to pronounce stuff. Different, difficult to pronounce stuff. Anyway, the rest of you know the story very well. Uh, the page blew up somehow and I was writing fiction on the side and I ended up publishing three books and now my fourth. And in the process, in the last four years, the amount that I've learned through this experience is just, it's tremendous. Essentially, I needed to break my heart in order to realize my purpose and also to realize what love truly was. And now the perception that I have of love is so different to the perception that I had back then. It, it took breaking my heart for me to realize that what I thought love was, was the worst thing possible. That was not love. That was not what was right. That was not what I deserved. And that is not what love should be so my perception of love changed but also my perception of my purpose changed my perception of what i was doing in my life and what i was meant to be doing changed it would have been incredibly you know fulfilling to have been a teacher but that wasn't what i wanted i wanted to be an author and through this page through this platform through this heartbreak through everything i got that opportunity to be an author and I'm still working on fiction on the side. So after publishing uh, Dear Self, I went back to writing my novel. But obviously I'm at this point now where I'm not just writing a novel. I'm, I'm doing so much more at the moment. Um, I do collaborations, I write articles, I work on my blog, I create these videos. I'm doing so much that it's, it's difficult to focus on just one thing. Also, I work part time. So yeah, uh, that whole experience was very weird for me, but it changed my life forever since then i have had so many so many ups and so many experiences that i would have never thought that i would have had i've managed to you know perform in amazing places at the trafalgar square for the Visaki mela i've performed at the science museum i've performed in open mic poetry nights i've open mic poetry nights i've performed at my old school i've given speeches on motivation and you know exam stress and how to deal with uh, different difficult life situations at my previous school at various different events i've done talks i've led writing classes it's just it's it's crazy to think that i would have done all of this four years ago it's crazy to think that i would have i would have had these achievements no matter how minuscule they are to a lot of people to me they are so big to me they are like i would have never imagined that i'd be sitting on a podcast trying to give advice on how to heal when four years ago my heart was so broken so it's been incredible it's been incredible it's been a great great journey but obviously i want to give you a well-rounded picture i want to give you an idea of both my ups and my downs and exactly what lessons i've gained so i'm going to summarize my ups and downs for you and here is what they are so the first thing that i'm really grateful for and i'm so happy about with this writing experience as well as with this instagram page is the fact that i've had the opportunity to meet so many people so many incredible incredible people that i would have never imagined to connect with and meet uh, as i said i've had the opportunity to go on podcasts i've had the opportunity to take part in documentaries and perform and run workshops and do this and I would have never imagined, like I would have never in my wildest dreams thought that I'd be sitting in front of a camera one day recording a YouTube video for my own channel. Like, I don't know, like I always thought that I'd just be an author, I'd not just an author, but I'd be an author, I'd be writing a novel and I'd be behind the pages. I never thought that I'd be putting myself out there in this way. But I am in my element, like I am so comfortable, I am so happy with doing this, I am so grateful. So that's one thing that I'm so, so 
so happy about with this page, with this channel, with everything that uh, writing has given me. The second incredible thing that's come from this whole experience from creating this YouTube chat, well, YouTube channel, Instagram page, from creating my Instagram page and then moving on to everything that I've been able to do is I've been able to kickstart my dream of becoming an author. So earlier I said that I really wanted to be a novelist. That's been my biggest dream. Like I cannot explain to you how much I want to be an author, a novelist, how much I want to write stories, how much I want to read the kind of stories that I've been able to dive into when I was younger. And this page has allowed me to kickstart that dream because four years ago with the writing skills that I had and with the experience I had, so with the little experience and little writing skills that I had, the possibility of me writing my first manuscript, editing it and getting it published have been would have been very, very slim. I don't know if I would have ever been able to and whether I would have just given up. It scares me to think that had this page not happened, had I not been able to write in the way that I do right now, perhaps I would have given up on my dream. Maybe I would have been able to realise it in a different way. Maybe 10 years down the line, I would have been able to say, okay, you know what, I've been living a lie all these years. I've been living a dream that... I, I, I've been living a life that I've never wanted. But to have the opportunity to be able to say that for the last four years, I've been living the dream that I've always wanted to live. I've been spending every single day trying to work hard towards my goals. Yes, some days are harder than the others, but the fact that I can say that I'm giving this a shot, the 10 year old me who wanted to be a writer, who wrote an alternative ending to Karen McCombie's book and kept it in her diary for years, would be so proud today and I think that's one thing that I'm the most most grateful for and most in awe of the fact that my dream is slowly but steadily becoming a reality the third reason why I'm so grateful and you know one of the good things that I've come out of this is writing non-fiction has allowed me to realize a purpose that I never knew I possessed and that is to impact people and influence their healing journeys in a positive way Earlier on, I always wanted to be an author so I could impact readers and their imagination and give them some form of escapism from their experiences, the way that I had dealt with my personal experiences through reading. But, oh, sorry. The fact that I started writing nonfiction and I started healing people in this way, I hope, it allowed me to realize that every single one of us has a purpose and we just need to find what this purpose is somehow open our eyes to it and understand that this is what i need to do like this is what i'm meant to do and that's why as much as i really want to be a novelist uh for myself that's a dream that i want to realize for myself this non-fiction purpose this non-fiction dream this thing that i'm doing all the time every day it's a dream that i've realized for my readers it's something that i do to serve my purpose, serve what I'm supposed to be doing in this world and also make some sort of impact. And it just allows me to understand that meaningful lives, like we all have a way of living a meaningful life and a meaningful life makes you so much more happier. It makes you so much more calmer, content, peaceful, at ease with the fact that your existence matters, with the fact that what you do matters. And I now, the only thing I ever say to people is that we all have a purpose and we just need to search for that purpose and find that purpose and then pursue it, which is what creating this Instagram page and writing to heal allowed me to pursue. Another incredible thing that's come out of creating this page, um, when I say this page, I mean my Instagram page down below. It's probably like showing somewhere here. But another incredible thing that's come through from this is I've been able to heal in ways that I never imagined. I've been able to heal not only the ache in my heart, but the ache in my soul, which came years and years before I even started that Instagram page. It came when I was a little girl. It came when I was going through so many things in my life that I never thought that I'd be able to come through from. And writing to heal, writing nonfiction in this way, way writing self-help in this way has allowed me to heal from that, that ache. And it's the most incredible thing. It's the most incredible experience to have to be able to say that I managed to heal myself and I managed to come through whatever it was that I was experiencing. And the last thing that I'm really grateful from, for, really grateful for, from, from this whole experience, I don't know what's wrong with me. Like sometimes, yeah, I just think that there's something seriously wrong with me because I do not know how to talk. I get corrected all the time. Like I get told, Ruby, what are you saying? You're a writer and you don't know how to pronounce this particular word. Like what is going on? Anyway, away from my tangent, let's you know talk about what's important. 
So, <laughs> the last thing that I'm really grateful for in terms of this whole experience is the fact that I've acquired so many skills that I never had before. So being a self-published author, right, let me explain to you. It means that you have to do a lot of things yourself. You edit your own books, you write your own books, you format your own books, you sort out the graphic designing of your books, you do the marketing of your books, you basically run a business. I'm an entrepreneur, okay? I had never thought that I'd be an entrepreneur. I thought that I'd just be like one of those writers that you hear about, like, you know, in those old movies where they're just sitting by the fireplace writing, like in an otherworldly place, and they're just sitting there and they're writing, and then those books just somehow print themselves and reach the shops, and I thought that's exactly what's going to happen here, but that didn't happen, unfortunately. <laughs> I had to create, I had to make a page, I had to market, I had to do the sales, I basically had to do everything, everything. So it's good in a way because it means that I've learned so many skills, I've basically become a woman who does it all, but there's still so many more skills that I need to learn yet, such as techie stuff, filming, editing, all of that stuff, which hopefully, eventually I'm able to learn. But that's the last thing that I'm really, really grateful for with this whole experience. Where's my pen going? Oh. oh no! So what are the downs? What are the downsides of this whole experience? Because nothing is perfect and I'm sure there are many things that I'm still yet to learn from. Well, here they are. So what about the downs? What about the experiences that have taught me a lot? And you know, the things that were, well, you know, every gray cloud has a silver li lining. So what is the gray cloud? I think the first one is the fact that it's taken me so long. This whole journey has just taken me so, so incredibly long. I still cannot say that I'm at a point where I can work full time as an author and I won't have any money problems. I won't have any problems where I'll think, okay, you know what, I'm creating and I'm doing everything and I'm making enough money from my books to save and pay for my bills and, and do everything. I'm still not at that point. And it's taken me so long. It's taken me four years and I'm still not at that point where I can work full time as an author. So I still work part time. I still work two and a half days a week um, just to get that extra income coming in. Now, why is that? A lot of people say that you need to just take the risk. You know, a lot of people say that until you're not in that risky situation where you've taken yourself out of your comfort zone and you're just working on your particular goal, you're not going to have the drive to do it. As much as I believe that uh, for a lot of people, I feel like sometimes you don't need to take a huge risk. You just need to take a small one. And when it comes to creativity, it's very hard to put any sort of financial or, or monetary stress and constraint on your creativity. Because if every month I am worried about how many books I'm selling, I'm not going to be as creative because my creative capacities to write and create are going to be influenced by the need to constantly promote, by the need to constantly market, by the need to constantly sell. And essentially, as creative people, we don't always write to just sell. We write because we want to make an impact. We create because we want to make our mark on the world. And that's one reason why I don't work full time as an author because I don't want me to be so money minded for me to be so influenced by making a living out of this that I forget everything else. I forget my drive. I forget my creativity. Like for instance, with these YouTube videos, I don't make any money from this. You know, I'm just doing it because I like talking to you all. I'm doing it because I enjoy making some sort of a small impact on your lives. I enjoy giving you some information. I just enjoy it. So yeah, so of course I want to be at a point where I can be a full-time author, absolutely, who doesn't? It's my dream and I want to realize that dream, but it has taken a long time and I don't know when I'll be able to get to that point. So I would say that if you do want to be an author, please remove the idea of money away from creating. If you want to be an author to earn money, I'm sorry you've chosen the wrong profession. Like I can tell you very honestly, the it's, you know, it's honestly, sometimes it's just about luck and it's about how well you are able to market your book or just who you know. And that's what contributes to you being able to get that biggest, biggest um, selling book. Of course, if you're traditionally published by an exceptional publication company, then publication, an exceptional publisher, then they're going to make sure your book sells millions. If you're a self-published author like myself, it's very hard for you to get those numbers by yourself unless you do something completely crazy and out of the ordinary. And I've tried for many years, it's not working. So I think slow and steady is a lot better to achieve your goals than something crazy and overnight. And that's how I see it. Make a video. I'm sorry. I'm trying to make a video. I'll come to you soon. Thank you, baby. Bye. Love you. Kiss, kiss, hug, hug. Close my door, please. Thank you. Sorry about that. Oh, God. Anyway, as I was saying, some of you... Oh, God. Yes? What do you want to tell me? 
sorry one of the many reasons why it's taken me so long to film videos is because my brother's just my little brother he's five and he always wants to play and he always wants to spend time with me so it's just so hard anyway some of you may be thinking how is this possible you've got so many followers how is it possible that you haven't been able to become a full-time author yet because so many people with this many followers have become full-time authors have you know made so much money from their books the idea is that there's not a direct correlation between the amount of followers that you have and your retail sales yes your sales will increase certainly by a proportion when you have more followers however there are people who have way less followers than me and their books have sold so much and the idea is that they have traditional publishers who have published those books and marketed them and invested in them and so on and i'm still struggling to find a publisher who will be able to do that for me so if you're a publisher or if you're a literary agent and you want to publish my book come to me which is please just like talk to me and i will come to you but just tell me <laughs> so yeah so yes, of course, like I want to be at a point where I'm a full-time author one day, but throughout my experience of writing, a lot of you don't see that social media is not real life. It's like, it's not what's happening, you know, on the outside. I could be really popular on Instagram, but I'm still living a normal life outside. So while I was writing this page, writing this page, oh. right? While I was writing on this page, I did my master's degree. I worked part-time in retail in Next, a retail clothing store here in um, the UK. I worked full-time at a university. I worked um, full-time in our civic center. I worked part-time in our civic center. And now I work part-time in a university. So I've always had a job. I have always had a stream of income coming in regardless of how many followers I get on Instagram and until I don't get to that point where I make more than how much I make with my part-time job and with the book sales until I don't make more than that just with the book sales I'm not going to be leaving this I'm not going to be leaving um, my part-time job I'm not going to be putting that financial strain on strain on my writing and on my creativity because I just create better when I know that I don't need to worry about money. The second huge difficulty that I've faced in writing and everything is finding a, a traditional publication house in securing a traditional publication house. Now I know that Jacqueline Wilson was rejected by so many literary agents before she got accepted and Harry Potter got published but she wrote a fantastical fiction which I'd say is very popular in today's day and age. I write a completely different form of genre altogether it started off as intro poetry went to micro poetry meant went to macro poetry went to prose went to self-help slash prose which is just is a very very weird genre altogether now it's not a mainstream genre that most literary agents would believe in it's not a genre that most literary agents would say you know what we're gonna make lots of money out of you so let's let's take you on board and this is a struggle that i've had for the longest time it, i really have i've struggled with securing a literary agent for my books i've secured i've struggled with securing a traditional publication house with my for my books because traditional publication house will not accept you unless you have a literary agent and basically it's a circle so just you know so I do have struggles, I do have problems. Um, I do want to secure my book in a traditional publication house, but I want to ensure that whichever company that I choose is one that's going to be able to do my books justice. And doing that means finding a literary agent who believes in my work and believes in my books and also understands that I don't want to be just a non-fiction writer, I want to be a fiction writer as well. So that would be great if I had a flock of literary agents wanting me and I'd be able to choose between them. However, that's not the case. So that's another issue that I've had. So don't think that just because someone has lots of followers on Instagram and they've got, you know, a huge, like four books sold, that they're still not struggling to secure their books somehow, to make sales, to do all of this thing, the, all of these things. It takes time, it does, and I'm still on the process, I'm still on the journey. I haven't got there yet, unfortunately. The last struggle that I've had with my whole writing experience is how hard it is to follow your dreams. And I don't mean the sense in the sense of like it's so hard for me to have motivation to follow my dreams. I mean it in the sense of sometimes I don't even know what I'm doing. There are days where I'm just like, what am I doing? Like this is taking me nowhere. Why am I doing this? For what reason do I want to not do a nine to five? have a desk job, come home, not have to worry all the time about my business, not have to worry all the time about my books, not have to worry all the time about everything that I've got to do, you know? 
why don't I just get a normal job and just do that and I just I'm unable to do it I'm unable to do that because of this drive that I have towards the dreams that I have and it is hard some days are harder than others some days the motivation to just get up and do something the motivation to write the motivation to create isn't there and if I had a normal job regardless of whether I'm motivated or not I need to go in I need to clock in I need to do the job and I need to go home I wouldn't have to worry about that I wouldn't have to worry about the fact that my goals are dependent on me because over there there's an external company that expects me to come into work do work for them and go home but over here I have to give myself the drive I have to be the one that motivates myself I have to be the one that time manages myself I have to be the one that you know does everything and sometimes it's just too hard but it doesn't mean that it's not worth it it does not mean that just because it's hard I'm not going to continue and I'm going to just let it all go because the fact that I've gotten this far to begin with with your support with your love and with everything that you've given me I know that it's possible and even if dreams are hard to achieve sometimes even if dreams take a lot out of you and take many many years to to you know show the fruit of your hard work it doesn't mean that you can't do it and that's one of the biggest lessons that I've learned that yes it is hard yes there are all these difficulties when it comes to pursuing my dreams but it doesn't mean that it's not worth it and it doesn't mean that I'm not going to make it one day because I know that I will like I know deep down at the bottom of my heart that I'm going to make it in whichever way that I want as long as I keep working hard and I keep doing something purposeful and meaningful in my life. So from all the ups and downs that I've had from this writing experience, from this writing journey, from my Instagram page, everything, I thought let me give you a couple of tips as a new budding writer who wants to know what it looks like, what to expect and what would be the best way according to me to survive in such a you know fluctuating environment, such a fluctuating social, poetic, creative environment. I don't even know what I'm saying, but yeah. Here are some tips. Now you're gonna see them. Number one, make sure that you have some sort of backup um, financially, financial income coming in. Make sure that you are stable financially when you do set out to achieve your goals. Set out to achieve your goals, because this is, you know, yeah. So basically make sure you're financially stable at least um, enough to maintain your lifestyle create for the sake of creating don't create to sell because if you're going to do it to sell it's probably not going to be something that you enjoy because we don't really enjoy what we sell we enjoy what we create we enjoy when we are able to produce something out of nothing because it makes us feel like we have a particular talent or skill selling is not a talent or skill you know marketing is not a talent or skill it's something that you can develop okay but what you give to this world is not something you can develop it's something that you are endowed with so follow your purpose and do it for the sake of your purpose not to sell Number three, be prepared for the long run. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in a couple of weeks or a couple of months. It will take years. So be prepared for the long haul and just keep going. Like that's all I'm gonna say. Number four, do not compare yourself to others. Your competition is you and yourself only. Other people's journey, how far they've come compared to where they were, it shouldn't concern you at all. And number five, believe in yourself. You're going to have so many doubts about what you're doing and why you're doing when you're going to be at the you know brink of collapse you're going to be like you know nothing's happening anymore when you're not going to be able to see any improvement any con any consequences what's the word when you're not going to be able to see any results you're going to question yourself the most make sure at that point you believe in yourself and you remember why you're doing this that's all for today it was a long video i know but i really hope that you enjoyed it uh if you're nosy like me i love hearing other people's stories so if you nosy then i'm sure you enjoyed it if you're not then what can we do but yeah thanks so much for watching today's video if you liked it please like comment and subscribe please share please let me know what you thought and i will see you all next week so from all the ups and downs that i've experienced with my writing journey and with oh god no, I'm not done!